Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the render filters. So these are some of the most powerful and fun filters in Adobe Photoshop. On the top three, we kind of have are these more generative plugins of themselves, like Flame and Tree. And then the rest have been in Photoshop for a long while. But let's just start at the top with some of these newer ones, beginning with Filter, Render, Flame. So if you try to click it just on a standard layer, it'll tell you that you need to be using a path to use this filter. So in order to create a path, you want to head over to your pen tool and then just make sure it's set to path and not shape. And then you can draw a path of whatever you like. So if I do just a, a little wavy line here, I can then whether I'm working on this layer or I want to do it on a new layer, I can go to Filter, Render, Flame, and it'll open up this Flame menu for us to adjust a kind of flame on this curly path. So you have some basic options like the type of flame, whether it's one or multiple flames along that path, or like a candle light. You can adjust some things about it like the width of the flame and the quality of the flame. And you can even use a custom color if you don't want orange. You could do something else like blue or something. If you go to the advanced tab, you can also adjust the turbulence, the jaggedness, and even the opacity of the flame. So you can make it softer or weaker and get interesting different results. You can also change the flame style. So flat to normal to more violent. And if you want to randomize the shapes more or not, you see you have a good amount of control. You also have these different presets. So if you do end up making a cool custom blue flame or something that you like, you can save that as a preset. So always remember that. And then you can load all of your different presets. But when you press OK, you'll see that it generates your flame along that path on whatever layer that you are working on. For the next filter, I'm going to show you on a photograph. If we go to Filter, Render, Picture Frame, this allows us to create a custom kind of border frame around whatever our document is. So you have all types of presets here, different kind of bushes or lines and shapes. And you can change the margin amount and the size of it. But you'll see if I press OK here, I'll get this border happening on my image. And you also have the Advanced tab as well, where you can adjust different things about your border. So if you want it to just be a standard border along the outside edges, you might want to lower the margin size down so there's not too much spacing. And then press OK, and you'll see it'll create whatever border that you set. So just like in the fire preset, you can save presets that you make. And so you can apply them on multiple photos. Um, even if you want to check out a tutorial I did on batch processing, if you wanted to add custom frames on a bunch of photos that you have open, you could set up actions to do that. But you can experiment and check out some of the different ones they have here. Each of these different options have slightly different things where you can adjust the colors and flowers. So here's another example, some flowers along the edges. And you see, I actually just combine two of them in this case. One tip I'll give you, instead of just working on the background like I did, just do it on a new layer so that you can always adjust and blend things more non-destructively. Continuing on, we have Filter Render Tree. This is a really cool one to see in Photoshop. It's almost like 3D generating effects. You can render all different kinds of trees. So they have all these presets here, all the way from an oak tree to a redwood to a cherry blossom. And you can change the way the direction is, the amount of leaves on the tree, and then the size of the leaves and size of the branches. And again, you have the advanced tab where you can adjust some different things, create custom colors if you wanted instead of just the presets and some different things about the shading. But if I press OK, you'll see that it'll generate this pretty well done tree. Now, the next section of render effects is a little bit more functional, the standard ones that have always been in Photoshop. First, you have Filter, Render, Clouds. This one's really handy. It comes in use so many times when you're combining, mixing things. Remember, whenever you're working in Photoshop, black and white can always be used as layer masks and mapping and displacement for other effects. This is just a combination of whatever your foreground and background color is set as. So by default, it's black and white, but if I did have my foreground and background colors as something else, and I did filter render clouds, you'll see that it gives us the foreground background mix. After that, we have difference clouds. So whereas the clouds is just a one step random generation, the difference clouds applies a set of clouds, but on the difference blending mode. So you'll notice that we get this 
inversion of colors that happens if I repeat it over and over. This could be another useful way to apply the clouds on a blending mode against a photograph, for example. The next one we have is fibers, and this just allows us to create a randomly generated fiber pattern, and you can adjust the strength and variance, so almost like the smoothness and strength of it. And you can click randomize over and over if you want as well. And this also is just a combination of your foreground and background color. But again, creating a texture like this comes in handy in many different situations. Just a nice texture to have. If you check out the episode I did on distortion effects, specifically the displace effect is a cool one, where you could save textures like this as a PSD and use them later to displace photographs. After that, we have lens flare. So this is your standard lens flare, but you have your options between the different lens types and the brightness amount. And if you click and drag, you can move around that flare and get like a lens flare effect that happens. And lastly, we have lighting effects. So this is another way to adjust the lighting. This one will open up its own little filter gallery, kind of like the blur gallery episode. And you can choose the type of light, so a point, spot, or infinite light. And you can create different lighting effects and move them around and adjust the strength of them in this way. And you don't just have to have one light. I can do one spotlight here and then click on this light tool in the top and add another one. So I can have multiple spotlights going on at the same time and just adjust them all in their own layers change the color, the, the highlight patterns of them. And when you're done, you can press OK and it'll render your lighting effects that you did. So that's a brief introduction to all the render effects and what they do. In the next episode of this playlist, we're going to be taking a look at all the sharpen filters and how you can sharpen your photos in Adobe Photoshop. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all my new videos. Check out all the episodes of this series in a playlist on my channel. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one where we cover sharpen effects.